Hey guys, Auspicious here. And this is going to be the rules for the Scottish Players Only Celtic series. Number one, all foreign players must be sold or released. Obviously, that counts for the players that start at the club. We're getting rid of all non-Scottish players unless they have a dual nationality with Scottish nationality is one of them. Number two, players with dual nationality can be used until they receive a cap for another nation. Self-explanatory, common sense. Number three, youth caps do not count towards being eligible, only senior caps for national teams. That alludes to the second rule. Obviously, some youth players are gonna be picking up caps for different youth teams. However, if they do have Scottish nationality and they don't have a senior cap for that national team, they are eligible to play and they are considered Scottish only, even though they are a dual national. Number four, manager may not be added in order to get Scottish national team job. Obviously, I'm going to try and become the Scotland manager. And in regards to doing so, I'm not going to be able to add a manager to create a vacancy for the Scotland national team. So we need to get that by pure means. So basically, the manager needs to be sacked or retire or step down, and then we apply and become manager that way. Now, we have the goals. Goals of the series are pretty, pretty normal. Obviously, wanna win the Scottish Professional Football League, the Scottish Premiership, without a shadow of a doubt. I'm assuming that that is a given for Celtic. We also need to win the Scottish Cup and the Scottish League Cup. Both of those tournaments, I think, are very achievable for, for Celtic, even under these challenge rules. The next one, however, much more difficult, and that is to win the UEFA Champions League. Obviously, the biggest, pr well, re realistically, the biggest prize in club competition, Champions League. You know, Celtic, they have a pretty unique history with European competition. We want to further that and not just be a group stage competitor for the duration of the series. The next three goals here on the list all pertain to the national team, the first of which getting the Scottish national team job. That is a goal in itself. It's going to be relatively difficult, at least until a few seasons into the game. The next one is to win the European Championship with the Scottish national team. And finally, the last goal, the biggest goal you could probably imagine is to win the World Cup with the Scotland national team. Obviously, we can add a few stipulations onto that after we achieve that goal, or if, if we achieve that goal. Anyways, let's get into the episode. Welcome to episode five of the Celtic Scottish Players Only series. On today's episode, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be taking on Paris Saint-Germain, PSG, in the UEFA Champions League. It's going to be at Celtic Park, and then the second game for the episode, we will be taking on St. Johnston in the Scottish League. Since the last episode, we've played two games, a 3-1 victory away from home in the Scottish League Cup quarterfinal against Dunfermline. As you can see, Lee Griffiths scoring in the 10th minute. We then had Ryan Christie scoring himself a brace. Uh, they also got a goal back, but this result putting us into the League Cup semi-final, which will be in the next episode, and we'll be taking on Ross County, uh, along with Galatasaray. But yeah, the second game was also a 2-0 victory at home in the league against Hibernian. Hibs, as you can see, Greg Taylor, the left wing back, getting both goals for us in this one. And yeah, that's us up to date. Let's get into the lineup. As you can see, we've had to make a few changes. We've got a couple of injuries. Both of our right wing backs, so O'Donnell and Forrest, both out injured currently. So therefore, at the moment, we're playing Scott Brown as a right wing back. He's essentially the only player that can sort of play there, apart from maybe Johnston, um, who can also kind of play there as a, a makeshift right wing back. Uh, but at the same time, he doesn't really have the defensive stats 
Um, whereas he, he does kind of have attacking stats, but I feel like Brown's a lot more solid despite not having good pace. Obviously, his pace is pretty atrocious considering his age. He is 34. As you can see, 9 acceleration, 9 pace. But he's solid defensively, and that's going to be pretty important here against PSG. Um, so yeah, the, the lineup's going to be Bain in goals, Kerr, Hendry, and Sutar as the centre-backs. Brown as the right wing-back, as I said. Going to go with Douglas as the left wing-back. Probably could have played Taylor, considering he scored the two goals in the last game, but we'll stick with Douglas. He's, he's pretty vital with his free kicks and stuff like that, so he's going to start. Then we're going to go with the same central midfield pairing of Armstrong, McGregor, and Ferguson. I mean, all three of them have kind of dropped off recently, so we need a, a big performance from them today. And then up front, we're going to stick with Griffiths and Christie. The bench day is going to be Gordon, McKenna, Taylor, Henderson, Murray, Mallon, and Johnston. And I mean, if we can pull off the victory here against PSG, I mean, you just look at their team there. Di Maria, Cavani, Draxler, Herrera, Verratti, Thiago Silva, Aquinos, I mean, even the goalkeeper, Kilo Navas. So many good players. Again, I'm just going to tell the boys to play the natural game. I feel like every time I do that, they perform better than they do when I choose anything else. It's a really weird thing, but I'm, I'm guessing it probably allows them to play without as much pressure as expecting them to win would. That's my thought process on it anyway. We're actually in behind Christie with a golden opportunity in the third minute, skewing that shot wide. You got Barry Douglas picking up a yellow card. Ease him off just in case. And now we've also got Brown picking up a yellow card. I mean, that one's probably a little bit more expected. I mean, it's only his first yellow card of the season, albeit he hasn't actually played too much. All right, we've got the ball, McGregor. With a nice ball over the top to Griffiths. That's a good save by Navas. Very good save. That's two pretty good stops. Oh, well, sorry, one one good save. And a, a pretty dreadful miss from Christie. But I have to say, we, we don't look too bad going forward at least anyway. Really good tackle by Ferguson. Christie, can he pass it? Oh, he's got to pass it. If he squared that, Griffiths would have scored for sure. What a missed opportunity that is. Really unfortunate. I mean, Douglas is playing absolutely dreadful. He's on a six match rating. I might even bring him off at half time, to be honest. If he's actually playing that badly. Oh, Cavani's stolen the ball. And we find ourselves 1 0 down, just like that. Defensive error at the back. And a striker like Cavani's going to capitalize 100%. And it's Hendry. Hendry's probably the, the least talented defender we have. I don't want to call him the worst defender we have, but he pretty much is. Oh. That's really unfortunate because I feel like we, we haven't actually played too bad. Anyway, I'm going to say, show me something else in the second half, obviously. Uh, we're going to ease Armstrong off. And then we're going to bring Greg Taylor on for Douglas. All right, let's go. Big second half. I actually think we're a little bit unlucky to be behind. Gonna ease Ferguson off as well. Now PSG are in behind Di Maria. 
And he just misses. Alright, I think we're going to bring Johnston on for Christie. Christie on a 6.4. Of course, missing that early, early opportunity. Griffiths. And we get an equaliser. Lee Griffiths, 19th goal of the season. McGregor finally getting himself an assist. Been a little while. And we're right back in the game. The real question is, can we push on and try and get a winner? Really nice finish there from Lee Griffiths. Yeah, a mile on side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Navis's rating dropped down to a 6.2 after that. I mean, if we have a couple of shots at him, we might score. We might score. Oh, and Brown has... What was that? Literally overran the ball. You wouldn't think he'd be able to overrun a ball, considering his pace is so low. Anyway, Griffiths in behind again. And he's got it. 2-1 to Celtic. That's already number 20. And I think we're just into September. Or well, we're towards the end of September. Taylor getting the assist. I'm glad I brought him on. A very underperforming Douglas. Probably should have started Taylor from the from the beginning. But we are in front. 12 minutes left to go in normal time. But it's PSG. I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past them. They could score two goals and win this game. I mean, we were defending pretty well, but Cavani's in behind. And Bain making a nice save there. Johnston now to Brown. Can't get a cross in, but wins the throw in. Only a few minutes left to go. Can we hold on? They are coming forward big time. Taylor with a strong tackle there though. But a poor ball to follow it up. Now Sarabia coming forward on the right touch line. Cavani. Oh, strong hands by Bain. We're still in it. Pierre changing their formation. I think they're going a bit more attacking. And they're still coming forward. Eighty seventh minute. It's cleared away by Brown. And we're in a stoppage time. Five minutes. Will it be? Oh Andrew with a decent shot straight at the goalkeeper though. Can it be another famous night? Another European night for Celtic at Celtic Park. Bain with another save there. Are we about to do this? Come on, boys. Hold on. Three minutes of stoppage time left. Herrera is coming forward. Blocked. Shoots again, and it's over. Thank God. All right. Brown with a long throw for us. Cleared away by PSG. They're on the counter attack now. Big time. Two players over. Ooh, Herrera is blocked. That looked a little bit naughty. Di Maria in behind, shoots, and it's going to go wide. Again, so lucky. A minute, 15 seconds left. <laughs> and we literally just clear the ball out for a throw in. The pressure's on, you can tell. 
50 seconds. McGregor brings a player down. Not sure if that was a smart foul. Gonna have to defend the free kick here. Right, he goes to the back post and it's gonna go in the back of the net. You have got to be joking. That is brutal. That is so brutal. I mean, it's just, it's hit about three players in the six yard box. Yeah. Finishes two all. Literally the last 20 seconds of the game. And McGregor, 8.4, but he's the one that gave away that free kick. I mean, it's a great draw, I have to say, but I mean, under the circumstances, we should have won that game. We should have won that game. Griffiths, man of the match in that one as well. I have to say, I mean, we're, we we got pretty lucky in some aspects, but then at the same time, super unlucky to concede with the last kick of the game, basically. Anyway, I'm going to skip forward and I'll join you back for the lineup against St. Johnston. All right, so we've got a few changes since the last game. Uh, we're going to bring... McKenna in for Suta, only on 85% match condition. Uh, similar sort of deal with Ferguson as well. He's on 88%. So we're going to bring Henderson in and into center mid in replace of him. And then, of course, Taylor going to come into the starting lineup as he's been pretty impressive lately. And uh, I really want to win this game, seeing as we are the home team. Um, as you can see, the league table, we currently sit in first place still. Motherwell, one point behind us. However, they have played one game more than us as well. So we're in a, we're in a relatively good position. Um, but obviously, it's, it's quite important that we continue to win, basically. A loss is really going to hurt us. Anyway, let's advance here. I mean, I want to see my midfielders... I know McGregor played really well last game, but I want to see Armstrong and Henderson sort of stepping up a little bit. Yeah, and we'll just tell them to play the natural game. I mean, it pretty much worked against PSG. Hopefully it can work against St. Johnston here. Might be one of those games where we don't see a lot of highlights. All right, here we go. Taylor with a long throw. Cleared away. And now St. Johnston could be counterattacking. We do have players back now, though. Which is good. They're still, you know, they're passing the ball around us pretty well. But we do win it back. Armstrong with a nice ball forward to Christie. A little bit wide. Brown. Lays it off to Henderson. And that's a great goal. I, that's, that's what I needed from Henderson today. It's only his second goal of the season. But he's been pretty, pretty woeful recently. His recent form. I think he's, he, he was on a 6.5 in his last five games. So that's, that's going to do him the world of good, I think. Really going to lift his confidence. And we've got a second goal there as well. Jason Kerr getting on the end of a Griffiths free kick. And we're 2-0 up just like that. Great start. We're only 24 minutes in as well. I 
And we've got another highlight straight away. Christy in behind. I mean, that's a pretty good save by the keeper there. Christy, of course, not a natural striker. But he does play really well sometimes. All right, we're approaching half time. Another free kick. Really good save by Clark, the St. Johnston goalkeeper. Armstrong with a corner. Goes short to Taylor. And he can't get it past the first man. Bit of a disappointing short corner there. Brown with a long throw. Not a bad one. Henderson over the bar. All right, Griffiths with a free kick. Can he bang it in? Hits the wall. A little bit disappointing. Not going to lie. But he has made up for it. He's scored anyway. Beautiful cross by Armstrong. Really, really nice cross. Really poor free kick, though. Um, but then, yeah, no one picks up his run. Armstrong just turns right to the back post. And Griffiths getting his 21st goal of the season as well. And we're 3-0 up going into halftime. So I'm definitely happy with that. Very, very good first half. Ooh. Scott McKenna from a long throw. Taylor with a long throw in. You'll see on the replay here, bit of a bit of a weird goal, actually. Reminds me of the the old Stoke days. Yeah, really nice goal. Good to see McKenna playing well for once. All right, I think we'll make a sub here. I want to bring on Dane Murray, the uh, the youngster, and I think we'll take McGregor off and we'll swap Armstrong and Murray. Just get Murray into the uh, the box to box midfielder role, with Armstrong moving into the the roaming playmaker. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll bring Griffiths off as well. Yeah, I guess we'll leave it like that. I think we might we might have a week before our next game. Didn't look like it was coming up anytime soon. Yeah, we're four 0 up. Only a few minutes left. Taylor's picked up a knock, so I'm going to take him off. Take him off straight away. I don't want it to be a, a serious injury. Probably been the the informed player at the moment. There we go, 4-0 victory over St. Johnston. I have to say, I mean, this could have been a really, really positive episode if we didn't concede that 95th minute goal against PSG. Man, that's so frustrating. But at the same time, I'm still, you know, pretty, pretty happy. I have to be happy. It's PSG, we, we were probably expected to lose. So it's a solid effort. Hopefully the fans at Celtic Park were pretty happy with it nonetheless. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for the episode. Make sure you smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And apart from that, as always, take it easy and goodbye.